welcome to Car Traction. Now today's video is about vintage bikes featuring a very nice 1940s, 1950s Rudge bicycle. Well, a month or so ago, a local car boot. In this video I'll be revealing our plans to potentially restore this bike so that we can ride around, possibly wearing even period clothes and look the parts. But anyway, in this video I'm going to do a quick walk around, maybe a bit of cleaning up and let's just see where we go. First of all, I'm just going to quickly show you around this bike. So one thing you may have noticed, it still has the original tyres. Now whether these will stay or not is unclear because they are a bit cracked. It would be nice to keep the original tyres. Obviously the inner tubes will need replacing. I think those have gone long ago, judging by the content of air in that tyre. But it depends what sort of thing this could be. We could go either way with this. We could make this into a sort of daily bike which means that we need probably some better tyres but if we wanted it to keep it in sort of period so it is very nice to have these period tyres then we might keep them on, we don't really know nice little rudge badge there just below original rudge lights I'm a fan of old bike lights I think bikes of this era should always have a light it just completes the look brakes not sure how effective those are, I've just been riding it around and I've tested them and there's not much going on there. Now this has got a, quite a little bit of surface rust, but hopefully with a bit of wire wool or something that should come off. Matching pump, I'm not sure if that's the original colour or the original to the bike, but it is nice to be there. You can see being spring loaded, you can take it off and this pump actually still works if I can get it all in shot that will be featured later on in the video if I can get it back in isn't exactly the easiest thing to do, there we go nice little brass topper on that got the cover over the wheels which means that should the chain slip <laughs> could be quite tricky to get at but tend to, this, these sort of bikes tend to be pretty robust with their chains I think it's only got three gears or something, so it's not the most usable bike because bikes of this era would usually have about three, possibly even two gears. But it means that there's quite a big difference in sort of ratio to the gears. So you could be going happily along, sort of going around like that, and then you shift up and it will be really tricky. Or possibly the other way around, you're happy going like that at a speed and then you shift down and then you're going really fast. Another nice little light. And there now this would have been quite a posh bike as you can see you've got the built-in dynamo now if you don't know the dynamo would have been used you can see the wires here pedaling that would generate electricity that would be sent to the two lights which is quite a clever method now this i don't think is the original seat i don't even recall if it had a seat originally but this is just one that we have got a couple of old bikes and a few old seats old bells all that sort of thing lying around so we put this on Brooks very nice patina previous owner has made some changes such as strapping some wires to the actual frame I'm not sure what we'll do with that then if we come around the back it's something unusual I wonder if any of you know why there's a white thing on here well, I certainly do so during the war there was obviously a blackout so you couldn't have any lights such as that on so what you do is you'd paint a little bit of white just so that there's a tiny little bit of visibility I'm not sure how effective it was, I'm sure it wasn't that effective but say a car was coming up behind you with it, of course it's dimmed lights it would hopefully be able to see you a bit better because you couldn't have any of these on now that makes me think that this bike could be sort of wartime but then again I've noticed that's the supplier's logo, so from Eastbourne, this bike originally, which means that that has been painted on before it's got the dealer's mark, which makes me think it must have been, a bit of grass in there, must have been something that was standard with bikes like this. So that makes me think, if I hadn't got that, I'd say this was sort of 50s. But with that, and especially not just an afterthought painted over the top, that makes me think this bike is sort of wartime era. Sadly we haven't got the original light lens in there. But anyway, that was a quick walk around. I'm sure you can see there's a few cobwebs in the spokes 
and around the chain so I think the next job on the agenda is just to clean up a bit this wonderful old 1940s Rudge bicycle. First of all possibly the simplest job just with an old rag just give it a really quick wipe down to get some of those cobwebs after now I will go over this with an oily rag as I do with some of my old petrol cans in other car traction videos now if you haven't seen those check go to the channel homepage and check them out if you like cleaning up all the bits of memorabilia you can see that's really coming up quite well this could possibly do with some polish even we haven't really done anything too big with this bike yet we pretty much just bought it and it's just been in the bottom garage just waiting for a day where we can clean it and its day of cleaning has come you have to be careful obviously around these wires you don't want to mess up any of that looks like there's some sort of old logo there not eligible now sadly One of, what I'm about to do now is possibly one of the most unpleasant parts of restoring a bike but hopefully in the end it will be worth it. So I've got a wire wool with some soap in it, I've got some water. So see that chrome there? It's looking a bit rusty so hopefully using that wire wool I can bring it up a little bit. So now that that's on, I'll pour the watering can, which has water in it obviously, over. Hopefully it'll wash off and then I'll rub off some of the excess stuff and then hopefully it'll come up a bit better than it was before. So now that's got most of it off, but just to make sure that there's no excess soap, I'm going to rub off with my oily rag. Obviously it won't turn rust into chrome, but the chrome that is there is coming up a lot better.
Now this bell is looking a bit rusty and I think it's seized. Whether it'll stay on there or not, I'm not sure. So I, I think what I'll do is I'll take it off because I can't shine up that little bit of chrome where it's clipped onto. This looks a bit seized up and I don't think it'll be too keen to come off. So with a bit of WD-40, I'll just spray it and let it set in. So I'll leave that for a couple of minutes and hopefully once I've found a spanner that size should be able or at least it'll be closer to coming off. I've just tried getting this off and it's really being quite stubborn so we might have to get some mold grips on it with the help of dad. Dad has just got the mold grips on it. I think they should be a bit looser now, loose enough hopefully for me to get it off. Try the bottom one first. Yeah, that's coming off nicely. I can do it by hand now. So now that's one side off that I have to do that one now. Yeah, that one's a bit chewed up. Just spray a bit more oil on it. Let that soak in for a couple of moments. I do apologise, my arm's probably getting in the way of most of the view here. Just really having to push in to get that seized nut out. Oh, that's on very tight. I think I'll leave it for a bit and then have another go. More oil put on and with a bit of help from Dad, hopefully it'll come off now. I must have spent about 15 minutes just on this one bell, it's really stuck on. Will it come off by hand? Oh. Eee. So you can see actually if I can get this into focus I have to zoom out a bit. It's actually come off on this side obviously, but somehow that side is still really, I mean, that is properly in. But I'm glad now that it's off so I can clean up that little bit with the chrome method that I just used for the other parts of the handlebar. I don't think I'll be putting that thing on with the palaver it took for me to get it off. So now I'm going to move on trying to shine up a bit more of the chrome around this light. After a lot of work, that bell is finally off so I've been able to shine that little bit up. But what I'll do next, and I won't bore you by filming all this, is just shining up other chrome parts such as the pedals here next to the very nice rudge grips and the bottom of the wheels. Now this isn't the only bike that we have roaming around the place. We also have uh, the rally, not rally, the rally, which means it's earlier. It's definitely pre-60s because I think they called themselves just rally then. You can see on there, so it's just rally. Now this would be men's bicycle, you can see that there. And this would have been quite a posh one I think because it's got the dyno hub again now I've already explained this but I'll just go through it again as you pedal around that would go around which would create electricity and then your light would light up should you want it to now the reason that this is more of an expensive thing is that some 
bikes had just against the wheel some sort of little wheel that you'd attach some sort of implement and then that wheel would spin around as this rubs against it which would then create energy over here but that could mean that if you're having to turn quite a heavy wheel here by turning this larger wheel it could be quite hard for you to ride to power your light at the same time speaking of this part you can see the nice rally logo logo intricate around where the chain goes functional and nice looking to be honest I can't see this bike being restored I think that one has potential but this one's more of a yard art you can see paint's peeling it's rusting quite a bit but it's a nice piece of yard art you may notice no seat I think the seat on the rudge over there is the one that this one used to have but of course Raleigh didn't make just adult bicycles they also made scooters. Now this is mine, I've had it for a long time. I think it was one of my first acquisitions. You can see the Raleigh once again. So it's sort of, I'd say this is 50s, 60s, but it's probably one of the earliest of its type. Due to its wheels, it's also got the solid rubber. Now all, I've never seen one like this. All of the scooters that are the Raleigh or Raleigh, seem to have some sort of more plasticky wheels and also have more rubbery tyres so I don't know, is my one rare? even if it isn't I still love it, it's a great little thing there would have been some sort of label there, it's a shame that's gone but that's very nice that one I think this is all the original obviously the foot plate, you've got the brake pressing against the solid tyre sure you can see little the rally scooters back in here now that's got to be it from my restoring that lovely old Rudge women's bike now hopefully soon we can get some new tubes for it and I'll definitely film that because I'm sure you'll be interested to see any more progress and if we get it properly done up but anyway that's pretty much it I hope you like that the rally scooter and the rally yard art bicycle now if you like this sort of thing check out the other videos on the channel homepage about something like 40 videos should keep you occupied for the occasional lazy afternoon but anyway it's time for me to stop waffling on and time for you lot to stop to start talking in the comments section let me know if you have anything like this anything like that do you like it doesn't matter what you think let me know in the comment section thanks for watching